Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back and we are back with a guest. Today we're doing somewhat of a interview slash person behind the music type of thing. Uh, this is one of many to come. I am here with my boy De La Cruz. Can you hear me? Are we good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up? God bless you guys. Dope, dope. Hey, so we're going to kind of just fly through a lot of questions. I want to not make my interviews super like, yo, so tell me the farm you grew up on and, you know, elaborate. So I kind of just want it to be like real quick, fly through some questions, see the man behind the artist and really just introduce people to you and uh, hopefully have you back for some more shenanigans. So first off, um, De La Cruz is a rapper, but I'm going to let you introduce it for yourself. Give us a short little intro, who you are, where you're from, and uh, give the people uh, the curb appeal of, of Mr. De La Cruz. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So first, I'm excited to be here, bro. I appreciate you, you know, reaching out and putting up your platform, bro. This is major, and I feel like it's um, you know, uh, a right step towards the future, you know. Uh, I see a lot coming from this, so... My name is Dela Cruz. I go by Dela Cruz. My full name is Otto Socrates Dela Cruz Jr. Super duper long, but God given. Um, 22 years old. Was born in Methuen, Massachusetts. Moved over to Lawrence, Massachusetts, which is like 15 minutes away. Um, Did you walk born there? Born and raised. <laughs> I could have, to be honest. I could have. <laughs> My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah, super, super small city. I, I believe there's like 70 to 90,000 people. And it's like, I could be wrong. My metrics could be off, but it's like a seven mile long city. It's super, super, super small, but I love it, bro. It's it's definitely played a part in who I am today. Um, yeah, man, that's just a little brief interview. Got saved a couple of years ago. Um, interview, a little brief <laughs> summary of who I am. Yeah. Um, Have you always yeah, lived in, in Massachusetts? And um, so you, I'm assuming you grew up there and, and moved uh, within your town, but were you always there? Yeah. So I, um, let me backtrack. I lived here for about like 14 years of my life. Okay. 14 years. I moved over to um, Salem, New Hampshire, which is about like 20, 25 minutes away. Not that far. Mm -hmm. Um. And I moved all the way over to Florida, Tampa, Florida. Um, where else? Methuen, which is where I was born at. Um, so I moved around a little bit, which is like now being at the position, the position I am, the age I am, and the and you know where I am and with with my walk with the Lord. I see how important it was for my testimony and just how powerful, like you know, it's made my testimony. So I moved around a little bit, but. On my way back to Mass, man. I love it. I love it here. <laughs> That's dope. And is there like, we're not going to get into it in heavy detail right now, but like growing up, was there a lot of people in the music scene up there? Um, I know all the hip hop heads are like, what is this? This kid knows nothing. For sure. For sure. There was a lot of big names too. I just can't, off the top of my head, I just, I just don't know, honestly, like. You always hear whole, the place like in in different like interviews or or in music. I've always heard you know Massachusetts get shouted out to some extent, but like like you, I'm I'm having trouble thinking of like the people out of there. But I I'm definitely aware that like there's got there's got to be something going on around there, and I'm sure someone will someone will put out like you know the short synopsis of like the history of yeah. hip hop in that place, but um like. Well, f first off, let's backtrack just a little, or we'll actually speed up a little bit. Um, what type of music do you make, and has it always been that? So, I feel like like every other artist, whenever we're asked that question, like what type of music do you make, um, try to keep it as, I don't want to say broad, but we like to just categorize it as, I'm an artist. I sure. make all types of music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, in reality, it's rap, hip-hop. I first started off when I first started rapping or first started making music. It was rap. It was like super, I had it on my SoundCloud for a bit, but there's like a whole backstory on why I just swiped it off. So it was, it's always been hip hop. It's always been rap. I never ventured into like, you know, R&B or any other subgenre or things like that. It's, it's always been rap, hip hop. 
Gotcha. Well, in, in as of late, like I always equate hip hop to jazz. Cause like when jazz came out, mm. you started having all these branches of subgenres come out, you know, warm jazz, cool jazz, jazz fusion, big band yeah. jazz, jazz phonic, like all these different legs kind of grew out so that, you know, there was a lot of different influence coming into the genre that kind of made new subcategories and hip hop now finally has what I would call like a great, like varying degree of subgenres. You know, there's so many different hip hop esque types of stuff. So could you tell people like as far as elaborating a little bit more on your your type of rap sound, you know, is there a certain beat style that you generally lean towards, you know, as far as street or jazzy or slowed down or sped up? Um, yeah. And then even your rap style is, as well. I would definitely say more leaning towards the jazzy. Um, my mm -hmm. dad, he's a, he's a hip hop head for sure. So when he first heard my music and once I first started, you know, I'm taking it serious. He was like, oh, you love those jazz beats. You love. I didn't I didn't hear what he was saying. I was just it just naturally like. And that kind of ties into me as an artist as well. Like I, I, I a big part of it is I'm, I'm young, so it's like I still have so much to learn about music in general, so much history, so much of the culture. I need to, you know, my homework on. But I would definitely say more of like the hip hop, jazzy, um, funky, bouncy type beats. That's the words that are coming to my, my mind mm. right now. And um, I definitely get that vibe too when I listen to your music. I've always wondered, like, you know, has it always been in the vein of like that type of slowed down, like conscious but vibey type yeah. of sound, hard hitting drums and stuff. So it's good to hear kind of you've been stewing in that for a while. Um, yeah. I want to kind of segue. Oh, go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'm tripping. It definitely was not always like this. I, um, in the beginning, when I first started rapping, like I, it kind of ties into um, a little bit of like who inspired me or, or and things like that it was a lot of like um, street rap, a lot of like pro era, a lot of um, different rap like that, like Capital Steez, a lot of a lot of conscious rap, and also a lot of street rap as well. Um, Capital I did Steez. A, Capital Steez. Right? Is Capital Steez like a young kid? He was. He's actually. He's, he's no longer with us. He um. He died way. I think like in 2012. But he was a part oh, of the. Oh, okay. Group. So he's not what I was thinking of. There, there was a guy named Capital something who I was thinking about. But Capital Steez. Okay, so this is an older guy, like or, yeah, or yeah. from the past. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. Exactly. Like the MF Doom, Madlib, J. Oh Della. shoot. Okay. It's kind of like those. Those guys are like they kind of introduced or kind of opened up the, the that whole side of rap hip hop for me they kind of just pioneered it in the way of showing the younger kids you know what i mean cuz jay mm -hmm. and them they were always around but yeah give us I, give I, us I, a sna a snapshot like real briefly then of that time i my question i immediately thought of was like when did you get introduced to to CHH but i think even further we should push back a little bit more um give us like i know it's always a deep thing people like to think through it and not leave stuff out but like give us like just a quick elevator pitch of like how you encountered the gospel you know was it always in your life and did it just randomly show up or or, or like how did you interact with somebody in the gospel what was that change point for you and uh how old were you things like that yeah so i um yeah like i i, I grew up my parents, they always took me and my, my siblings. I have three other siblings. They always took us to church. Um, okay, so you grew up in the church. It, it, yeah. Granted, like, they took us to church. I was in the back. I never really listened much. I was just, like, kind of tagged along. I always had, like, a reverence, and I was always like, okay, like, this is what my family does. You know, we talk about God. Still to this day, actually, um, I just saw my dad a couple couple of hours ago. We still huddle up. We, we hold hands, get in a prayer. And afterwards, we um, kind of like do like a football huddle, like just one, two, three, three, and then we just do like a little family. That's what's up. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so God has always been like heavily, heavily pushed by my parents. They would do Bible studies. Um, and like, I like to say that I, I credit that time to like very, very vague, basic conviction uh, that came from a knowledge of just heaven and hell, just Jesus. So like I always, in the back of my mind, knew that Jesus was God, weirdly. Like, whenever you talk about God... So you, just, you always remember yourself believing, like, early on? 
I, I would say be, believing, but I didn't know the Lord. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't walk with God. I didn't know him as my father. I just kind of knew him as God. And I don't know, I guess my parents just really owned in on heaven and hell. Like I remember my mom, she had a Bible study for some reason. She thought it was good. And I thank God she did it. You went through the book of Revelations with us and just, I'm like, you I'm will pay. Like, Get like, ready. <laughs> <laughs> if you stop, if you don't stop lying to me, this is where you're, no, like she. <laughs> Either like, you're written hey. in the book or you're not. <laughs> Go do your chores. <laughs> Bro, like it was like, it, it, was, it was a blessing though, you know, it's, but I remember leaving those Bible studies like, bro, crying, borderline crying. Like I do not want to go to hell, so. It was very vague. I didn't know the gospel like that. Um, so you fast- you knew of this 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 Jesus culture, you know, going yeah. to church. You had some boxes you were checking. You were amongst spiritual people, and then mm-hmm. what for you was? Because I always like to, you know, I think there's a lot of times people don't really know. You know, they they can't really say you know January twenty fifth on a cold night. You know, I, I stumbled upon the realization of, you know, um, it, it's different for a lot of people. And, and when God opens our eyes for the first time, um, it is a process and we're always in process. But as far as that kind of transformation moment, we know that, you know, the Bible says, you know, our, we're, we're awakened. We have eyes to see and ears to hear. And apart from his like, intervention in our hearts uh we we don't want him we're hostile to him and so exactly. obviously we know there's a moment that something changes but we don't always know in that moment the significance of it but what was the either moment or season where you just started getting the sense of i'm a sinner i love myself more than god and i need a savior and when did God start really speaking to your heart on that reality to make you want to uh, chase after him and worship him and cry out for a savior? That's that's so good, bro. Um, I would say it was the darkest and lowest season of my life. And I say that and I'm not a lot of, you know, I'm 22 years old, so it's kind of like how... <laughs> did Sarah but, uh, break up with you or <laughs> you didn't make that bro. touchdown at the end of the football game what happened <laughs> nah nah tell us what it was man what what, what was you don't have to get into great detail but like what yeah. was some of the lows like is it depression did did an actual yeah. event happen what did that look like sure it's definitely depression anxiety it was just a a whole whole um just the sum of the lifestyle that I was living, bro. Like, mm. just there was so much, um, so much temptation and so much like pull towards m- me being young and just growing up in high school and just seeing my friends smoking and just partying and just um, how many girls you can, you know, the whole lifestyle yeah. is heavily pushed today that I see it heavily and it's still, you know, it's still alive. So I just got fully, um, grabbed by that lifestyle started smoking started just you know going out and just trying to get with any girl that i can just you know partying a little bit and just living that whole lifestyle which eventually caught up to me bro i just had a lot of family issues going on a lot of personal issues that i i believe should have been faced and there should have been you know um whether that be a healing process reconciliation whatever the case may be issues should have been addressed I was too busy smoking the pain away. I was too busy trying to party and trying to have fun just to get my mind off the things that were happening, whether that be up in school, you know, just so many things piled up that I'm like, man, bro, I'm, I'm empty. Like, I, I can't keep living like this. You know, like I just graduated. Um, you know, I'm seeing my peers doing X, Y, and Z. But it, it was all of that on top of, right? I'm going to get too in detail, but... I had a, uh, a, a really close friend. Um, we were in a rap group together. And his friend, he was a Buddhist. He was into the New Age, um, just astral projection. Like, he was like guru, I would call him. Like, he was the, the guy. If you had any questions about crystals, anything you wanted to learn how to astral project, like, go to this dude. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I was cool with him in a rap group. There was times when we're smoking, we're in the car, and I'm there in my lukewarm state. Mind you, I had, you know, that, that the whole revelation talk with my mom and just like, you know, that upbringing. So I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, okay, you know, God is real. Boom. I want people to follow God. Mind you, I didn't really know what that meant, but I'm trying to preach it to other people. So I'm there talking to the dude. Boom, boom. We're just having conversation after conversation. So he had this, this radical encounter with God who he, during that time, was saying, bro, this must be an angel. Like, this is, it was just a whole, he was just, you know, deep in the world, just selling many different drugs, just, you know, just deep. And he had this radical encounter with God. I'm talking about, like, if, if, if you were to hold hands and pray with this man, you'd feel the power of God surging through his hands. I've never felt a power like that in my life. Like, it was just like, was no denying the change in this dude, right? So I'm seeing this in my lukewarm state. Like, I know Jesus is God. I know he's, um, he, he's calling us to repentance. I know he's calling all his, his children to go and follow him in, 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 in spirit and truth, to worship him in spirit and truth, and just to um, turn away from our lifestyles and just follow him. So I'm seeing that change in him. And I'm like, hold up. I'm still dealing with masturbation. I'm still dealing with this addiction to weed. I'm still depressed. I'm still anxious. Like, I know God is real. So I, I just, seeing that change in him, it just really made me self-reflect and be like, wow, like, I'm really not giving God my all. Like, I know there's different aspects of, of myself and different addictions I'm facing and battling, but I realized that what I needed, instead of fighting and trying on my own, was simply just to give up just to give up it's so interesting that you say that because like and i'm in hearing your testimony one thing i know for sure is that it was a grace of god that you felt the weight of emptiness at the mm. age that you were at because a lot of people you know growing up you hit college or you get out of high school and that's like the height of I think a lot of people feel the weight and the emptiness of relationships and friendships and hardships and tr be people being trustworthy and family issues and job issues, financial issues. People definitely feel the weight of that. But I think at that age, most people are inclined in their heart to believe that those can be fixed or at least put off by replacing it with something else. Oh, my girl left me. Okay, I'll find another girl. Oh, I'm in financial problems. I'm a smoke. Oh, high school was bad. College, maybe it'll get better in college. Oh, this friend sucked. Okay, I'm gonna go to this, this other group or I'm gonna go skateboard or, you know, there's always something right behind the, the first vice that can give us this false sense of hope where it's like, okay, well, at least there's, I, I'm at the height of my, my, my youth, like there must be something and normally they would turn to things, but for somebody to sit there and say, dang, I, I see a lot of this stuff, but man, I still f like in actually acknowledging the emptiness, that's the key, right? Cause people feel emptiness all the time, but they just replace it or they, or they, they believe in their hearts or they want to push toward believing that it's replaceable, but you felt the weight of it and thought about your orientation with God, like, man, I, whatever I'm looking for, I don't have it. And despite, and so it really showed like how empty you were that you were able to look at this guy and like, you know, whether it was envy or just deep awareness of your emptiness and like trying to just saying like, man, that, whatever that guy has, like, I want that. You know, and that, and that had to be amplified by the fact that you grew up in the church. You saw spiritual exactly. people. You, you've been through the, the, and that's always a heavy weight, right? When you're like, yo, I grew up in this environment. And then somebody mm -hmm. comes around and seemingly has like greater impact than you or has like a more genuine encounter, man, that like amplifies the emptiness. Um, this wasn't like a salvational thing, but I remember when I was growing up, um, middle of my faith journey, um, it, I, I was saved at this point, but I remember hearing somebody rap about God in a way that made me go, man, who's the God that he's serving? Wow. And like, 
because the way he was talking about his relationship with the Lord and how big the Lord was to him and his music, I was like, dang, I don't view God that big. It like made me realize like, dang, like my worship is trash. And so uh, some of it was like stuff I just didn't know about God and his word. But then uh, just the way he spoke about his Lord, I was like, man, he's close to the Lord. That man is close. I want that. And uh, it was an, a reality check. And it was a grace of God that like pushed me toward God. Man, God, there's stuff about you I still don't know. And man, I want to know what that guy knows because that dude is set on fire for you. Like, So I can relate to that that feeling of seeing something that somebody else has and wanting that in this case, God. So, um, yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to elaborate on? Like, so when you, you encountered this guy, you see it, you had that emptiness reality, you wanted to press into God. Was that the moment like that kind of turned the sail for you or was it something else alongside that or? Yeah, man. Just, just to like, um, get back off, off, off of what you said, man. Like it's, it's biblical, bro. You train a child in the way that they should go. They would not depart from it, bro. It's like it, I was to the point where I'm I'm smoking at least two or three blunts a day to the face while I'm reading the Bible, while I'm watching a a street preacher, the name of David Lynn street preach. You know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. so much tied into that that you could touch upon. But you train a child, you train a way, train a child in the way that they should go. They will not depart from it, no matter what that journey looks like. Like prodigals are 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 a real thing, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that moment, I was that was like the 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 cherry on top, bro. I was when I was like, okay, what am I doing? Like, I remember um, we had a Bible study, myself, um, at that friend, and my cousin, <clears throat> and I dropped my cousin off. Uh, my friend left, and I was just bawling my eyes out, man. Like, I had a little bit of weed in my glove compartment, and I looked to my cousin. I was like, bro, I'm done. I'm so done. And mind you, I've said that many times. The grief that I felt, like, just felt so much weight. On, this is crazy. I felt so much weight of my sin on my on my back, and I just felt so much guilt. At the same time, I felt so much love. I felt so, like, unworthy. God literally, he was just like, I don't know if it was a scripture we read beforehand, but I was just feeling so, like, um, like the scale was just, it wasn't balanced. Like God has poured so much out. There's so much favor on my life. And I've just done nothing to even acknowledge him. Like I'm not even living how he's calling me to live. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in his lap and just spitting in his face. So I throw the weed out the car window. I drop my cousin off and um, it's like the Holy Spirit had me take a specific route where I saw my siblings, um, passed by my mom's house where my siblings were and that was like a big thing i'm like man how are my siblings gonna deal with these family problems this and that and god was just assuring me on the ride back that he has everything in control so i was just like an overwhelming um feeling of like just god's love and, and how much he's really been there for me throughout my whole life so yeah long story short I, I get back to the house um and i just laid it down before the lord i, I said lord i know that this addiction, uh, me, it was weed, and pornography. I know these, these addictions are keeping me from a deeper relationship, a deeper intimacy with you. I'm not obeying you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm living a lifestyle contrary to what you want from me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I told him, I was like, Lord, I, I, I don't care if I have to be like a drug addict going through withdrawals in my bed for however long, however long. Cause I know that you are able to take this from me. And at that moment, bro, like, like, Holy Spirit just fell on me. And like my, my faith, I just had so much faith and so much assurance that if I just let go and, and call upon God's help to free me from these addictions, and to as well be the, my actual Lord of my life and my Savior, he'll do it. I um, called upon the Lord Jesus. I said, Lord, I believe you are Lord. I believe you died. Um, and, and, and we're buried and rose again on the third day for my sins. And if I believe in this, I will have eternal life. Uh, and bro, I kid you not, I went to sleep re reading the book of Romans and I woke up completely transformed. I've not touched weed since, haven't even had the urge 
all the addictions in my life were just radically broken and I just was filled up with so much fire and zeal for the things of God and I just grew in my relationship um, deeper with him and I've just been walking with him ever since, man. So it was just, it was a journey for sure. Like I, I, I like to highlight that point where it's like I, I gave, I surrendered the next morning, it was just radically, but it was a journey, man. It was, it, it was a journey. Hey man, I've heard a million and one testimonies and I've heard, I've heard people come to Christ on hardcore drugs, near death experiences, somebody just walking down the street, have the realization, want to turn to Christ just from the most plain of realities to the most hardcore. I've seen somebody say, you know what, from that day, it's never, you know, I, I completely changed. I've heard the other story where it's like God began to work on me and it was a five year journey, but you know what, I was kicking off this and that. I've heard it all. Slow, fast, intricate, or simple. One thing that they all have in common is the Lord wakes them up and he begins drawing them to himself. And that's why I love the power of a testimony because it's not just this prescription of like, like the Bible clearly says what happens when God transforms somebody, but he doesn't give the timeline. Mm -hmm. And we know what happens instantly on his end, but how that plays out in our lives looks different. And so it's good to hear that, you know, and, and just for the person who may not have had that instant kind of transformation just know that like bro if you have that dr if, if somehow you felt like you woke up and then you feel a calling in the draw of the lord and you notice yourself responding to god i hate what i am without you i w what do i do god who are you and you're drawing towards him and you're getting a hatred towards your sin and your disobedience and you you feel that draw bro that's repentance turning away, seeing him for who he is, feeling that weight, like that, be encouraged by that guys. Um, that, that's an awesome exactly. testimony. I appreciate that. I'm gonna ask you one more question and then I'm gonna hit you with this new game I invented uh, <laughs> where, where we're gonna do some flash questions to kind of change the script before we close out the interview. Um, I don't wanna spoil everything in just one interview cause I wanna bring you back. But you know, in, in light of the testimony, Real quick for me, um, now you're making music, right? And you've been making music for a little bit. You've been influenced by the culture. Now that you're making music, obviously you want to bring maximum glory to God. I don't want to ask you the, the, the simple questions that are, so now what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, what do you think? We always look at the music and there's something we're trying to provide in it that we don't necessarily hear or that we're trying to shed light on. What's, if I was to come up to you and say like, yo, what's, aside from the gospel, what is unique about what De La Cruz does? Um, what are some things that you find really influence or encourage the way that you do your music? Yeah, I think recently um, and... It's weird because I, I I felt this. I can't put a time time stamp on it, but I felt this shift in my music, and I just feel like there's just so much cookie cutter. There's so much Christian sayings. There's so much like, how can I put this? I just feel like recently in this season, the Holy Spirit has been really highlighting the importance of just being transparent. In my struggles, being transparent in the process, the journey, sanctification. It's, a, it's not like we, you know, there, there are certain cases, just like you said, where, you know, we have a battle, we have an addiction, we have a, a struggle, and the Holy Spirit just, you know, we bring it to the Lord, and right then and there, um, it's eliminated. But right. there are sometimes there's a process. So I'm just continually finding myself in, in certain processes. And... I don't know, man. Like the Holy Spirit has just been pressing on me just to be transparent on how you feel, what's going on. Like, like mm. you know, a lot of the times, you know, worship is amazing, and I believe there's power and breakthrough in worship. Um, but I believe sometimes we just revert to saying the words "Hallelujah" or you know, just saying biblical words that we know or, or the norm. 
in fear of being transparent and real with God. That's what he wants. Like he knows our heart. He knows you don't want to read the word, bro. Tell him you don't want to read Max. the word and you know, in 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 having the heart posture of knowing that you need to change. You know? Instead of just, you know, going about it in a in a in a in a, in a false way. So mm-hmm. recently, if, if you just tap into my um discography, I've been trying to like I have a song called Laziness. Um I have a song that's called All I Got, which is like um just tapping into fact that god really is all i have so many struggles and so many things going on so if you really look deep into my um my music i i I think what i bring that's unique and different is just the transparency and the rawness like i'm growing in the uh and not being afraid to say that i'm not okay at the same time not glorifying it but wrapping it around to hope who is jesus jesus is the hope no matter what situation X, Y, and T you may be going through. Jesus Christ is the hope. You know? Yeah, like at the end, and I'm glad you and I'm glad you mentioned that part. Not not staying there. Um, that's yeah. an important area I like to talk about. Where it's like, why would anybody want to be a Christian if you have no joy in your life, uh, exactly. or you or you only stay there? So that's good that you you're always introducing something else. Now I'm gonna press in even further. Hit me. So if you had. Five, and I'm gonna give you a, a, a you know a little dog bone here. You ready? So, I need five words that describe De La Cruz music. Just w- one word, and one of them has already been provided because it's been sticking out like a sore thumb. Transparent is one of them. I need four other words that describe your sound. This is amazing, bro. <laughs> um, all right, so transparent is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um. I would say, uh, let me see. Word raw is just coming to my mind, and transparent and raw kind of go. That's all right. We'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Raw. Um, let's see. Experimental, okay. for sure. Um, I need two more. <laughs> let me see. So I said a transparent, raw, experimental. Uh, this is so good because I actually need a lot. Of, I, I like shy away from just self reflection sometimes. This is like what, like what, like what do I make? <laughs> like, you, it could be, it could be process? describing the sounds. It could be describing the message. It could be describing the process, the energy. I, give me two words. Yeah, and what's that word? It's um. Um, unpredictable, I would say as well. Unpredictable, okay. Unpredictable. Raw, transparent, unpredictable, experimental. Take us home. What's the fifth word? And I'm stumped. Not gonna lie, bro. My Holy Spirit. What's a word? <laughs> what? I need you to throw I'm a word stumped, out. Huh? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. I say four. funky. Fun- no? Okay, we'll go with funky. Yeah, we'll go All with All right. Funky. If you listen to De La Cruz, you will hear funkiness, transparency, rawness, experimental. And what was the other one? Beats me, man. You got to have to clip. <laughs> clip oh, we go back in the clip. Okay, so that's a good segue, though. Um, the last part I want to do before we wrap up, and my final question at the end of this is just going to be where people can find your music and anything that you got coming out on the horizon. But before we get there, we are going to do a kind of speed questionnaire of De La Cruz. I want quick question or quick answers to these quick questions so we can kind of learn a little bit more about you. You ready? Let's do it. And I'm firing these off. I might, I might respond to a few of them, but I'm probably just going to you know, transition very quickly. All right, first question. Favorite food growing up? Jeez, chicken Alfredo. Okay, hold on. Now, See, now we got to stop because you just got chicken Alfredo on deck? <laughs> Who's making bro, chicken was, Alfredo? Oh, my mom Dukes, bro. You gotta, okay, psh, so mom man. Dukes is, wh- is whipping it up in the kitchen. Okay, oh, favorite man. TV show growing up? Uh, growing up Max and Ruby For sure mm. Okay Favorite video game Console Of all time 
That's a no-brainer. I want to hear nothing in the comments. ES, PlayStation, bro. PlayStation what? PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. It's a whole PS okay. line, Play man. PS, PS. okay. It's what, P- okay, what about handhelds? Oof. Best handheld. I'm going to have to run with the PSP, man. The PSP okay. for sure. Okay, yeah, I'll let it slide. Um, yeah, favorite thing you, yeah, to do. <laughs> favorite thing to do on your day off. Music, it's work, work on some music. Okay, music, cheater. All right. <laughs> um, okay, what is your ideal vacation spot? Oof. I need a place. Yeah, I'd definitely say somewhere in Italy. Oh wait, 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 wait. Either somewhere in Italy or. Israel, man, I've been, I've been. Israel has been on my heart. I think it's on every Christian's mind or heart. But I would definitely say leisure, Italy, probably eating a croissant, riding a boat somewhere. Let me tell you uh, something about Italy, bro. When you go to Italy, because I've been, you will find a water fountain that is constantly on. So you'll see a stream. You know, it's almost like you push the the water in elementary school. You push the water fountain button down and you just left it on. So there's a water spout on every single corner. Um, you definitely want to go to Rome. So you can hit up all the historical, the Vatican, the Trevi sure. Fountain. Um, the, they got this giant hole in the ground where there's just stray cats thrown in there by the hundreds. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, they got a crazy, bro, listen, the food's great as well. Um, definitely hit up Rome when you go to Italy. Um, and that's a good, good, good choice. Speaking of ideal spot, if you were trapped on an Island, give me three things that have to go with you. Other son, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So you're set, right? I'm looking, game over, bro. I'm, 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 I'm living sufficient. Grace is sufficient. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, I'm gonna let it slide just because that, yeah. that, you know, I can't argue. Um, yeah, okay, bro. if De La Cruz was an animal, what would it be? Yeah. Am I? Is it a Christian cliche if I say lion? I'll be a lion for sure. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not. I'm just trying not to picture your face on on a with a lion's mane. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let it slide though. You know, lion's not a bad choice. Um, lion, bro, I'm, a, I'm gonna give you some pushback though. Give me one reason why you would be a lion. Sure. Um, I think growing up, I always was just saw him as the lead. You feel me? Like just dominant, just a whole lot of power. Okay. I feel like it's tied to a lion, you know. So we, we're gonna see that power. Pow- we're gonna see that power on that basketball court. Uh, Come as, on, man! As soon as, as soon as we link, we're gonna be testing people's hands out here. Um, Come on, man. Okay, so I got two more for you. What's one of the dopest gifts you've ever received? No, I, I know every Christian right now is like I know where he's going. With this. Don't Maybe you not dare go say it. Route. Don't you dare say it. <laughs> um. Greatest gift I ever received. Oh, that's crazy. Um, it doesn't have to be the greatest. What's what's a, a gift you received in your lifetime where you were just like, "Are you serious? You got this for me?" Oh, I would say my wife actually. She the last my last two birthdays, she's giving me a beat maker and this bluebird that I'm holding in my hand right now. Bluebird Ooh, Mike. Yeah, man, thank she, you, wifey. Thank you, wifey. I'm love. <laughs> I'm love wifey will always lace you up, man. It's amazing. Uh, for real. How how detailed they are, how memorable they are, and and uh, how they Way how they get a dude. Bro, <laughs> listen to me, man. If, you know who got the better yeah. end of the deal when you see my wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, cool. So wifey's hooking it up now. Last question to wrap this up: If you could pick one guy that you got to spend the day with, getting mentored, who would it be? Oh, uh, that's fire. Um, and that's really fire. This is kind of difficult just because I'm young. <laughs> There's so much information. There's so many leaders that I feel like I need to like. Who's one cat you would just be like, yo, this would be crazy if I actually got to spend the day with this fool tomorrow. I mean, like 
think it'd be Lecrae, bro. I, I Lecrae? Okay, so you'd hang out with Lecrae, play some basketball, go in the studio, yeah, listen to some exclusive cuts. Okay. Exactly. Chop it up. Just hear some game from him. You know, he's, he really, he's a, he's a figure, bro. He paved the way. So I definitely want to hear his insights and just get some game from him, bro. That'd be fire. Yeah. We need more Lecrae's in the space. I feel like- 100%. There's definitely a lot of people who pioneered and paved the way for CHH. It's not just Lecrae. You know, Lecrae is just kind of, you know, he's the silhouette. He's the iconography of, of this space. Um, he's still around. His relevance and impact is crazy. But I can't wait to see how many Lecrae's get produced from this generation. Uh, the saturation... You know, we're in the era where it's like cool to be a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you don't ever have to. The, if you're the guy who's feeling like, man, I'm the only Christian out here, then you're bugging. You just like live in a shell because so many Christians that are doing successfully right now, they're relevant in culture. Um, so many crazy testimonies. You don't ever have to feel like the odd man out. Like, there's just so much going on right now. And then on top of that, just so much Christian art making. It's not even funny. So to see all of the new pillars that come into play is going to be really dope. Um, but, yo, I appreciate you for answering all those questions. Um, we're going to kind of wrap it up here. But why don't you let the people know what's on the horizon musically for you? Um, what can people expect in the near future and also where they can find everything that you got? Yes, sir. So I actually just dropped a single called Fall On Me last Friday with my girl Guess, Gabby. Um, it's out on all platforms. I um, You can find all of my music, every single song that I've, I've dropped on all platforms. On Have all I platforms. heard this record? Um... <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Mixed and mastered by your boy, the one and only Conscious man. Man went crazy. He definitely elevated the sound. Like even if you tap into some of my older stuff, this new song "Follow Me," you'd see the 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 grace that's on Conscious's fingertips. So yeah, man, mm -hmm. that's um whole lot of new music. Thinking about a project this year that's that's undetermined. It's in the vault, but you know, thinking about the rollout. So just a whole lot of new content, new relations being built, uh, at a um, show coming up in Atlanta with a few other fire Christian artists. So yeah, man, 2023 is going to be amazing. Amazing. In Jesus name. Dope. And they can find you on, on all outlets under just day, De, De La Cruz. Exactly. D E space L A space Cruz C R U Z De La Cruz. Dope, man. Well, Hey, we super appreciate having you. Um, I wanted this to kind of just be like an open floor conversation. And um, there was definitely a lot more than that, which is awesome. So I hope to have you back, you know, to help me out with further episodes. And, um, you know, takeaways, guys. Um, hope you guys were really touched by his testimony. Um, you know, people are so diverse and creative and have a lot, a lot of stuff going on in their life. Um, I really love to see and hear about what God is doing in someone's life. And um, we don't hear enough about it. And so when people can have a very personal testimony of it, I, I still to this day feel like the testimony is single-handedly the most powerful um, tool that we have as believers. I don't care how much scripture you know. Um, I, I don't care who you belong to. I don't care who you who's teaching you were under. Uh, every time I hear that testimony, man, it, raw and real, um, I always get inspired. I always get you know, want to give thanks to God and I get to see God in a new way. Uh, it's refreshing. So I hope you guys got a lot out of his story. Um, definitely check out his music. Um, oh, okay. Clip that. Start now. Um, definitely check out his music, guys. Show him some support. Check him out. Follow him on, on all socials. Listen to me, guys. It takes like not even a whole minute when you follow somebody on all their socials and follow them on their music platforms, whether you're on Spotify or Apple or whatever, maybe even cop an album, and the artist sees that you did all of that and it took almost no money at all and one minute of your time, when they see that, I got a new fan and a new supporter with that little bit of time that is seemingly meaningless to you, makes a world of difference for an artist um, I've been doing this thing for over 20 years and I still get excited when somebody 
follows all the content or sends me a quick message like, yo, this was crazy. I appreciate it. Um, still makes a world of difference in, in kind of energizing and refreshing uh, the artist. So definitely go out there and support them. Guys, until next time, be blessed. Like, share. Most importantly, if you can, comment on the video if you have any questions or if you were touched by anything. And um, let's just keep it moving, man. Yo, I'm dumping on y'all this year, man. Like, my, this content game is, is I, the, the machine is built, man. We're about to start cranking and dumping clips on all y'all of just crazy content. On, and I want to incorporate as many people as possible because I, I strongly believe I'm about to complete the blueprint on how to do this. And uh, I want everybody to be involved so that they can be made known to people and you guys can see how many people glorify God and are, are super great individuals that you can be inspired by, encouraged by, equipped by. And uh, we're going to leave it at that, man. Y'all have a great rest of your night. Cruz, appreciate you for being on, and y'all be easy. Peace. Yes, sir.